form government come 2031, uh, somewhere there. Um, I'll ask you again in terms of uh, how you hope to rebrand yourself. And already it's like you've moved away from the Max Chongo, uh, the uh, uh, diehard name. You know, you are going to the uh, young King Cobra. You know, I don't know if it's, that is part of your rebranding as well. You know, but the question is, how much pressure do you have in rebranding yourself to change that long perspective that people have about Max Chong? When somebody talks about Max Chong, Max Wei Chong, uh, something that comes in people's mind or some of the citizens is that this guy is a thug, you know, unruly uh, citizen altogether, a person that who, who, who doesn't believe in, who, who, is, who is very indisciplined, for example. You know, you remember the scandals that you were involved in, the scandals of brandishing a gun, you know, uh, uh, beating people in 2016. All those issues, how do you hope to clean your face altogether? Boasting with monies around, you know? First of all, I'll tell you, between you and me, let's look in the mirror. Yeah. Let's see who looks stubborn between you and me. <laughs> eh? Because if you look at me, you look at my face, do I really look like a thug? Mm. No. So when you're in politics, there are so many things that people can talk about you. There is this... We have seen a number of people being investigated already, and these are prominent leaders who were in power yesterday, and uh, there were already allegations from the general public out there that uh, there was too much corruption in the past administration under your, your, your political party. And uh, some of your leaders denied during that time that there was no corruption whatsoever. And now what you are seeing are people being uh, arrested, you know, and the best example, it is you, Mr. Chong, sitting here, uh, whose uh, two motor vehicles were raided, you know, by Not the... Two. Uh, how many were there? I think four. Four, you, you see, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the DC, they suspected that uh, you could have purchased those motor vehicles using possibly dubious means in inverted commas. What transpired? Let and me, how did you buy those vehicles? Let's start from there. Let me tell you the truth. In my life, I believe <clears throat> in making sure that my children are well taken care of. Before the eyes of men in public domain, I might look disorganized but I make sure that my children should have the life that I've never had, should have the best school education that I've never had. I started business in 2006. Before PF won an election in 2011, I had what was called Big Brother House in Avondale Shopping Complex. It was the biggest bar by then, this side, before even keg, before even granddaddies. That same period between 2007 to 2009, I had another big brother in Garden. It's now, I think, called The Thrill, next to Cockpit. I was the competitor to, one of the competitors to Cockpit. I had Big Brother 3, as if you're going to Kalimba Farms, at Chris Moore. Then I had a boutique in Charleston, the first boutique, one of the first boutiques. And I had the first boutique right opposite Lumumba bus station, double story. So I started, uh, besides that, I also had the car business. I was amongst the first people to do car business. Most of these big guys that are doing car business now, they found me doing car business. So from that time, in 2006, till now, do you really expect Maxwell Chongo to fail to buy MacX? Now, coming back to that... ...critical voices. Um, why are you here today in as far as uh, why you lost power to the UPND? What do you think could have been the reasons? I think, you see, the, there are quite a number of things that I would point out. Yeah. I am not a man that uh, calls a shovel or a fork or something. Mm. You know, I call a spade a spade. And um, I think the... Um, there was a gap that kept on growing between 2017, 2018, and 2019 between the leadership and the grassroots, mainly the youth and women that vote in large numbers. And um, I'm sure you used to invite me on so many occasions to come and uh, 
you know, to, to come for interviews like this one. And you'd ask me the same question each time you'd interview, you'd call me to say, look, we see you writing articles that sometimes sure. don't sit well with your party. Yeah. You see, my loyalty is to the nation and its citizenry. You know, to be in a ruling party, it's a privilege. But what is very important and cardinal for me as a politician, a young politician, mm -hmm. is to see to it that the welfare of an average Zambian mm -hmm. is improved. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Who messed up, really, uh, for the PF to lose power? We did. It's a collective effort. If anyone from the PF, be it you are a section official, mm -hmm. branch official, constituents official, district, province, a member of central committee, mm -hmm. and, of course, the top boss, if anyone was to say, no, I did not contribute, that's a lie. We all contributed. It's a collective loss. We all we are all to blame for mm. the loss. Yeah. And why have you decided to leave the political front now instead of, uh, you know, uh, uniting together like your colleagues have decided to stick together? They have accepted, yes, we, make, we made a mistake here together or collectively, and then let's unite. You yourself you decided to be out of the boat. Listen, at no <laughs> point did I say I am out of PF. Right. But I remember vividly I said, if at all, Mr. Davis Muila continues at the 